Okay, let's get started. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, my name is Nico. I'm a product manager at uh, Golem, and I'm going to be your host for the next hour. Also, I'm quite happy today because it's, uh, you know, it's Friday, so uh, it's uh, going to be weekend and uh, not so long, hopefully for you as well. Uh, at the same time, also, Alex is uh, also connected to the live. He will be uh, moderating the chat box. So if you got any questions, just you're free to put them into the chat box and uh, you make sure to forward those uh, at the end. So after that uh, session, we'll have a quick uh, question, and question and answer session. So uh, the questions can be related to today's topic or if you got uh, other topic, uh, go ahead. Uh, today's session is going to be about uh, uh, physics and interaction with uh, maybe uh, keyframed colliders. Uh, yesterday we spoke about how you set up your characters for physics and today we'll see how you can use those characters in a kind of uh, real scene, more kind of. Uh, what we're going to do is going to be a spinning bar. You may have seen you know, plenty of uh, viral videos like this. Uh, where you get that, uh, you know, a spinning bar here and uh, the characters will run and as soon as they touch the bar, well, they kind of lose and uh, um, we'll use the physics to simulate their reaction here. Um, just, uh, well, we're not going to start uh, right now, just uh, let a couple of minutes for more people to join uh, if they're late. Uh, let me remind you that uh, next week is going to be the 10th week we are doing live in a row. Uh, so, yeah, it's been... Uh, already 10 weeks uh, for us doing lives every week, uh, most of the time two times a week. Uh, but starting from next week, um, we'll do only one live per week and we probably tackle more advanced topics. So uh, next week is going to be, it's gonna be about clothes configuration and simulation. And the week after, it's going to be about how you set up your own locomotion system. So how you how you ask animators to make their the clips which are required for a locomotion system to work properly. And they're going to be probably on Thursdays. So uh, uh, keep an eye on our website to know more about uh, the exact date. But yeah, it's going to be probably on Thursday. So next week, close. Okay. So I believe now we can get started with uh, today's session. Um, let me maybe show you what's in the scene, uh, what I prepared so far. So I'm having one entity type which is uh, loaded with uh, one of the character pack assets, uh, the regular assets as always. Um, I'm having a population tool here uh, which has a couple of slots and uh, you can see here I'm playing with the emitters. So uh, right now there's no characters because my map my tool don't emit any characters here. And uh, in, in terms of behaviors, if we take a look, they're just empty, so they, they're not doing anything yet. Um, so let's go. Let's get started with, uh, with that scenario here. So I would like uh, char some characters to be emitted. I don't want all the characters to appear at the first frame. So I would like that tool to emit characters on a regular basis. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna need 400 characters here and uh, I'm gonna assign those characters with uh, well let's say a run animation so I'm gonna grab uh, from the um, character package which comes with the software I'm gonna go with a run animation so there won't there won't be any uh, collision avoidance here I uh, don't really care about that so characters may collide uh, with each other uh, but it's not really you know, the purpose of today's session. I really want to show you how you can interact with that spinning bar here. So uh, applying a run animation, I'm gonna uh, also provide some start percent variation. So all my characters, um, they don't start at the same frame. And as soon as I play uh, my sim, I'm starting to have a couple of characters running and uh, you know going around uh, and um, with different postures. Probably I can assign them with different speed ratio. And uh, well, if you guys are connected from the beginning, maybe we can do uh, a quick guess how many characters. So based on those, well, let's say, okay, uh, how many I set up here, or let's say we do 300. Uh, how many characters you think will go through uh, that spinning bar within being hit by it? Um, so is it gonna be like tw 10, 20, 100, maybe one, maybe known? Um, so yeah, go ahead for a guess. I have no idea. Uh, I haven't made the scene yet, so, um, but, go with a guess. So 300 characters, how many will go through it? So uh, right now I haven't set up any physics behavior, so that's why we just ignore uh, that bar. 
Uh, but yeah, they just run and uh, did I uh, put some speed ratio on my animation to have variation here? Yeah, I did. So I have some characters which may s run uh, a bit, uh, um, a bit um, well, faster and slower than the original animation here. So we're going to pick just a random, uh, a random factor here. Okay, so uh, next step, if you've been following the previous session, uh, you already uh, know what I'm going to do. I'm going to add right before everything starts, I'm going to add a physicalized behavior because as always, uh, characters don't exist into the physics world. So we want to add them because by default, it can be costly to add them to the physics world. Uh, so it's not done by default. So I'm going to add a physicalized behavior here. I'm going to set it on kinematic to say that right now my characters, they are not influenced by the physics world, but they exist. And that will allow me later to uh, be able to check for collisions. So I'm going to, um, I put this right at the beginning. I just want the status of my characters to change. I just want to, I want them when they're emitted, I want them to be headed to the physics world. Uh, so I'm going to, uh, just change the trigger here. I uh, put that on true. So when the simulation starts, change the status, uh, stop right away. Uh, so the status will be changed and play that run animation. Just save it here. And uh, you won't see any difference here within the simulation, but now the characters do exist. Um, just to make my point here, we can see now we got a physics environment. And if I go into the display attribute and draw the collision shape, now I probably will see my characters appearing into the physics world as uh, collision shapes being driven by the animation. So that's what the kinematic um, mode means. So they do exist into the physics world. Okay, so next step is I want my characters as soon as they hit uh, that bar here, I want them to react to this. So um, the way I want them to react is probably turning them into uh, maybe ragdoll or playing an animation. It's really up to me here, but uh, as I've got a lot of characters, I would like them to interact with each other as well as soon as they felt. So I'm going to turn them into a ragdoll. So I'm going to put a new physicalized behavior here. And um, I'm going to put it at the same uh, position than my motion behavior here. So it means that my characters will be uh, driven by that run animation. But at some point, that behavior may take over as soon as there is a collision. So I'm going to set that mode to dynamic. So it means that uh, there will be... Uh, completely ragdoll. I may change that a bit later. And uh, when I want that to happen, so once again, I need to change the stop trigger. So that changes the status of my characters. So I want this to happen as soon as my characters get in collision, right? So I want to use a collision trigger that I'm setting as root, which is going to be the one which will be evaluated. And the collision will be with, um, I don't know, it's really up to me here, probably an ID. Uh, and as soon as the characters collide with um, a rigid uh, body collision ID. So here, uh, plenty of options. So I can check if I'm collision with another entity type, um, with another entity, or maybe with another rigid body. So rigid body means it's uh, usually like a Maya object, uh, which is turned as a rigid body. And uh, that rigid body has a specific ID here, which I can set up. So let's say my rigid body is going to be uh, a, a random number, which will be 666. Okay. And uh, if I just throw my sim here, probably nothing would happen because I haven't defined that that spinning bar here is a collider that my characters will interact with. Uh, so that's uh, going to be my final step here. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, grab that spinning bar, which is uh, just a um, just a cube that I, I specify some uh, some uh, white um, value here. And what I want to do is click as soon as I've got that selection, I want to click on that button here. And it just means that that mesh, that Maya mesh here will be headed into the physics simulation as a crowd rigid body object. So selecting the, um, the mesh here, pressing that button, creates a new node, which uh, takes the name of the mesh as a, as a kind of a namespace, as a prefix, and uh, then a crowd rigid body one. So let's take a look at uh, what this is all about. And you can see here within the viewport that we got that display now, the, the edges of that meshes are now, are now white, uh, which means that uh, apparently there's something which is going on with that object. And if I run the sim, still nothing happens because what I'm I'm going to look at is going to be a collision with um, 
an ID of 666. So right now I haven't, I haven't set up any collision here. So let's take a look. Um, so those are the rigid body objects. You can see it's connected to the transform of a spinning bar. So that spinning bar has a keyframe uh, transform. So it's just reading the same keyframes and applying the same deformation than here. So we can't really do, um, here I can't deform the mesh, the original mesh. I can't take the vertices and, and animate them uh, because what's it's actually uh, gonna be read from uh, the, the rigid body here. The, the shape is gonna be fixed. And what's going to be read is only, you know, the transform here. So that's only the transform being animated and not the vertices uh, individually here. So it's connected to that mesh, which is called uh, the spinning bar mesh, which is uh, that mesh here in the middle. Uh, then I can specify what the simulation type. So is it going to be kinematic or dynamic? So it's exactly the same mode uh, than you are able to set onto the characters, right? Uh, kinematic means that they're going to be driven from keyframes. And dynamic means that they're going to be driven, that object will be driven by the physics engine, which means that kinematic means uh, if I've got keyframes, my, my bar will spin and follow. And dynamic will mean that as characters touches that bar, that bar will react to this. It will be just a dynamic rigid body object. I can specify uh, what's going to be the density of that object uh, here. It doesn't have much meaning here because the characters don't have much influence on it. Uh, I can define the bounciness. So um, this is going to be an influence because here my character is going to collide with it. So how much my characters will bounce on it. So right now it's like kind of concrete, no bounce at all. So it's usually a value between zero and one. So I'm going to say, you know what, it's, it's a bit soft. So characters may bounce on it. And also each of my uh, rigid body on my character. So uh, this is what my characters actually looks like in terms of physics. Each of those um, boxes here, they do also have some um, restitution parameters, so that's exactly the same. So what's going to be taken here when the, my characters will collide with the mesh is going to be both the restitution of the collider object and the collided object. Okay, uh, what else do I have? I have uh, static friction, uh, dynamic friction, so how much uh, it's going to be um, stitched uh, to that, to that uh, mesh when there's going to be a collision, uh, once again between 0 and 1. Uh, then what's going to be the, the type of the shape? So this is most of the time this is detected automatically for, for you. Uh, as here, I use a cube that I just deformed. The system was um, was uh, able to figure that it's actually a box and uh, it was also able to figure what's the size of the box. So we just read that value from uh, w my actual Maya mesh. Uh, but let's say you're not using one of those uh, primitives. Um, well, let's say you're not using a box, you can still use a sphere or a capsule. And I will totally encourage you that um, if you can approximate your colliders as any of those three, you'll always get better colli better collisions that, um, than using the, the other three ones. So here, um, as always, for the physics engine, it's always easier to uh, compute collisions with um, simpler objects, uh, which um, collision distance can be computed in a really efficient way, where uh, if you're using the triangle meshes here, you'll have your your rigid body following exactly your triangles but um, the volume representation will be less precise and you may have some characters interacting or intersecting uh, with uh, those objects convex l is not so bad triangle mesh is really trying to avoid and uh, eight field um, only works if, you, if you're having a planar surface so if you were having like a ground um, and you want it to represent it as a collider and your ground is irregular, it has some hills and bumps here and there. Um, using the eight field is probably a good idea here. Uh, so here are the size and then the other parameters depends on the mode you're in. And finally, we got something called the physics collision attribute. So those are gonna be used for uh, the collision trigger. So it has two parameters, one which is an ID and uh, remember I I'm actually checking an ID here as a collision. Uh, so I can specify a, a random ID here, which will be fortunately the same one that I specify within the trigger, or I can also use a color. Uh, so here it's uh, reading the color from the shader. Uh, it's connected to that Lambert. I, I can uh, just uh, break that uh, connection if I want to and specify another color and uh, that will be uh, represented on the edge. So let me break that connection, for example, and specify it's gonna be red. You can see that now your edges of your crowd rigid body are gonna be red.
And the way to use the color rather than using the ID is uh, here within the mode, you can go within color, heading it, and you can say that the collider you're gonna collide with is gonna be a rigid body color and you can uh, just uh, pick the right color. And uh, here uh, we can also have like a superior inferior sign. Uh, we're gonna use the U uh, value of your color to specify what's gonna be the value we're gonna compare it to. Uh, so that's why we have inferior and superior values. But here I'm just going to stick with the ID. I'm, I'm happy with those. Uh, probably going to save the scene and uh, let's see how it goes. So now we're having that spinning bar. It's maybe a bit too fast. And as soon as... Okay, yeah, it's probably a bit too fast here. As soon as it touches my characters, you can see that uh, they, they do react to that. They're, they're being pushed by it, actually. Um, the reason for that is... But well, the reason for character, some characters like really jumping mad uh, into the air is uh, probably that uh, we're having some uh, hard collisions going on between characters. So let me uh, maybe rewind and uh, figure figure what's really happening here. Uh, let's play for a couple of frames and uh, try to find one guy. Okay. So yeah, that's the perfect example here. Um, so I kind of spoke about that that use case yesterday, uh, but um, here that that's way better to actually show it on uh, an actual example here. Um, so what's going on here is that that mesh is animated by Maya, and uh, we fetch its position like at every frame. So we fetch the position at under and frame 118 and at frame uh, no sorry 19 and frame 100. 120 and uh, at frame 119 the characters and the spinning bar were not colliding with each other but at frame 120 they are completely colliding with each other so um, some options that we have is uh, you know within the the physics solver here we can say that the physics sub steps here is going to be um, so it's going to be how many times per frame we're going to evaluate the physics engine we're going to assemble the physics engine uh, but the thing is here even if i increase that number as we fetch the position from maya and that maya only updates the meshes on on frames um, that's not going to change everything anything here i still going to have my my characters colliding with each other in here for the physics engine it's kind of the worst situation because there's some rigid bodies being in collision with each other so it, it's kind of you know like a nuclear explosion kind of so that's why the characters like jump so much there's so much energy because um there's two rigid bodies being merged within each other and that just generates a lot of energy uh so one way i would have to tackle that probably will be to change the frame rate of the scene so what you want to have is you want um maya positions and orientation of that rigid body mesh to uh, be sampled at a higher frequency. So rather than using the 24 FPS I'm using here, probably I would I would have to use maybe, I don't know, 60 or 100 FPS to get a proper collision here. Um, so, well, I'm, going, I'm not gonna do it here, uh, but yeah, keep in mind that that's the way of doing it. The physics sub steps here are only to be used if the collisions you want to filter are gonna be between two golem characters. So if those are two golem characters, they're gonna be updated internally within the physics engine, so we don't rely on Maya. If it's an arrow and uh, you know a soldier, um, those get that get updated internally by the golem engine, then it's given by the, the physics engine, so there's no Maya interaction here. But as soon as you got a Maya interaction like this, uh, the spinning bar, which is a, a keyframe animated uh, mesh, you'll have to probably increase the, the frame rate here. Anyway, um, let's say we're kind of, uh, we're almost happy with that, and uh, let's see how many characters go through. Well, my, my guts are telling me that those characters are not running fast enough, and the spinning bar is going way too fast, and uh, on the 300 characters, I doubt that there's gonna be one who'll be able to go through. So uh, the the game I specified at the beginning, the answer is just like probably zero. Uh, one way maybe to solve that, I actually want to have some characters going through it because I prepare another thing like uh, after I'm having a wall and I want my characters to um, you know jump into the wall and and, and break it. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is probably like slow down uh, that spinning bar. I'm also gonna speed up 
my characters. Uh, so, okay, what's the right way? Probably I need to figure where's the, okay, where's the curve? Uh, and uh, okay, let's slow that down, maybe by a factor of two. So now um, the spinning bar is uh, going much more slower and probably I need some characters to run faster because, oh, okay, that guy is gonna go through. Okay, a couple of guys will go through uh, as soon as they're pretty close to the center. Okay, so yeah, they're good. Uh, okay, let's stick with that. Um, okay, here, I'm, I'm, by the way, I'm using the, the dynamic mode and uh, probably not the best idea because you can spot some, uh, some posture here and there not being really realistic. Uh, probably I want to, I want to switch uh, to something else. Uh, yeah, okay. So probably I want to switch maybe to the local server mode. Um, so we kind of uh, jump, uh, where we kind of explained that yeah, at yesterday's session. Uh, but uh, local server mode means that uh, I'm gonna use some animation to drive uh, the rigid body, but still the physics will apply. So um, here my characters will be hit, but they're still playing that that run uh, that run animation. So uh, they adapt. Uh, well, they they collide with the ground, they collide with the other characters, but they still play that animation. Um, but probably that's not the best animation to uh, to play, right? Maybe we can play another animation when something's happening. So this trigger here, the collision trigger, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share it. Uh, I'm gonna ask my motion behavior to also use uh, that stopping trigger and I'm gonna change the animation as soon as, uh, or you know what, well, maybe not. Well, ma let me show you something different. So what I could do is maybe sequence animation. I could uh, put like maybe a run animation here. So let's rename this like run and let's rename this like a full. Okay, and uh, into that full behavior, I'm gonna play kind of a falling clip that I just converted before. So let's go into here, motion. So it's not part of the pack. I'm not sure where I figured that animation was from, maybe from Mixamo, uh, but it's uh, just 150 frames animation of a character falling. Um, so not really interesting, but I want to go from the run to, to the full. So that's completely valid here, and I could probably share um, the, the trigger, so I can say, okay, that run animation, I want it to stop uh, as soon as uh, my characters are gonna be in collisions uh, with the bar, so I can share the same trigger here. Or what I could do, and maybe I, I'm gonna show you like another thing that we haven't really uh, seen before, is uh, I'm gonna say that that full animation, it's gonna have a higher priority. So we got a system which is called priority and weight, which allows um, to specify how much of this animation will be uh, applied to the final posture. So when you're blending two animations at the same time, you can specify the same, well, different weights uh, to say, I want to see more of that animation and a bit less of that animation that, that produce a blending. But sometimes when you want to play two animation on the same parts and you really want to see one more than another, you just uh, change the priority. So here my run animation has a priority of two, my full animation has a priority of two. If I want that as soon as that animation starts, if I want to uh, to see it as it is, I just increase the priority and that just means that uh, I just put a higher value than all the other animation and that just means that when that behavior will start, my characters will play the full. And just to make my point here, you see that as I'm uh, running all the behaviors at the same time, uh, that full animation plays from the beginning, it has a higher priority. Uh, so now you can see that char those characters playing uh, the falling animation. Let's probably add some start person here. And what I want to do is uh, only trigger that animation as soon as my characters uh, collide. So I'm gonna share uh, here. So I'm gonna use the same trigger than the one I've been defining here. So what I could do is I can design that same trigger or I can actually share if I wanted to. So the way I share it is uh, um, I'm gonna look at what's the name of that trigger. So then that trigger is named uh, physicalized to stop trigger. Well, not really convenient, right? So I'm gonna rename that um, collide with bar. Okay, uh, trigger, collide with bar, trigger. Okay, and what I could do is go into my full behavior here, go into the trigger attributes and say, what's gonna be the start trigger here? It's gonna be the collide with bar trigger. And by doing so, now when I select that trigger here, you can see that the same one here um, gets selected uh, within the behavior graph. So that means that two triggers are the same, they are, they are shared. 
So as soon as my characters will hit the bar, uh, they turn into a local servo and at the same time they play that falling animation. And well, it's it's not perfect, but it's still better than uh, that true animation. It's it's okay. It's better than I expected, actually. Here we go. So okay, what's next? Um, I'm having like five ten minutes. Uh, so what I wanted to do is have like a, a, a canon of characters. Uh, what I wanted to do is uh, maybe design like a quick zone here. And uh, so let me add the plane. And as soon as the characters get into the zone, uh, I want to make them fly. I want I want to expl kind of explode them, right? So here, um, okay, and scale that a bit. Okay, just on that dimension. Okay, not sure. Come on. So, okay, that's going to be my zone here. As soon as my characters hit that zone, I want them to here. Uh, m jump forward and uh, hit those boxes. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to design probably another behavior here, which will uh, get triggered. Um, what it could do is probably... Well, let's make another graph. Um, so I'm going to put a co um, container here. I'm going to first put a, a physical eyes. And I'm going to turn my characters as ragdolls, let's say. And this is going to happen as soon as my characters get into a zone. So I'm bringing a zone trigger here. Taking that zone trigger. Oops, sorry. Uh, pressing shift uh, to keep the selection from the viewport and be able to select some node here. Map the two together. And now it says that as soon as my characters enter the zone, they just turn as a rigid body. Uh, then uh, I want them to fly uh, towards um, that uh, that wall. So I'm gonna put a force behavior. That force behavior will have a direction of Z. So I want my characters to go into the direction of uh, the Z axis here. And so I'm gonna put a one here into the direction and uh, I may want to well, I may want to them to fly a bit. Uh, also on the up direction, so I'm putting some value into the Y. And the magnitude, let's go for 10 here. And um, you know what, I'm going to put maybe um, just to uh, iterate faster, I'm going to put that zone like here, scale it so it covers the whole section. And I'm going to move that, oh damn, still can't reach that controller here. Okay, so what I want is... Uh, just to check uh, my different values here. Well, okay, 10 is not big enough. We can see that the jump is not is not uh, enough. So let's go for 30, let's say. And I got the characters running and here we go. Now it looks like a, a canon of character. So I would like to put this right after the spinning bar. And I also want uh, my cubes to react. So my cubes here, uh, are a wall of uh, 12 different cubes, so I can select the whole bunch of cubes here, and I can press the crowd rigid body, and for each of those, it's gonna co it's gonna create like a collider, uh, a crowd rigid body collider, and I need to set those. Oh damn, it's gonna take me a while. I need to set all of those uh, to dynamic. Uh, There's probably a tool that I, I can use, probably the attribute spreadsheet within Maya to do that, but I'm not really sure where it is, so I'm gonna. Uh, grab do so here I'm saying that those are gonna be uh, dynamic objects and uh, those dynamic object means that as soon as they're gonna be hit by something from the simulation they're gonna react to it so yeah sorry about that I should have probably written a script to do that for me uh, one button script to turn those attributes on or prepare that earlier I totally forgot that I wanted to set those into dynamic anyway so let's see how it goes so um, notice, by the way, um, my my cubes were not exactly uh, touching uh, the way I designed them. I just put them on top of each other. You could see that when I started, um, the physics simulation was already taken uh, those uh, cubes into account. So they they were computing the the new position for those cubes. So that's why you got the falling uh, uh, of the cubes when the the simulation starts. And hopefully, yay! So they they probably like way too light uh the density here is one gram uh, per centimeter centimeter squ uh, square um so i could probably change that maybe i can say one of the cube here i'm not sure which one it is but uh okay let's say that one here is going to be uh so it's uh cube eight uh let's say that one is heavier 
So I can go into mass, I can say probably that one is, I don't know, 1000 kilos. And uh, it, it's gonna be probably, it's gonna probably reacting differently. Well, you can see still uh, when you're running the simulation, it's becoming really unstable because that guy is 1000 kilograms and that one is probably like really, uh, really light. But let's see how it goes. Yay. Yay. Well, it's, it's heavier, but it's not really like, uh, not really <laughs> easy to see to spot the difference. Not so bad. And uh, if I wanted to play that same, um, you know, that same animation than before, uh, what I could do is uh, probably uh, say, okay, I want to uh, have a collision ID of 666 of all, on all those boxes, but let's say I want to play that full animation as soon as my characters um, maybe hit the boxes. Um, here, the collision ID is gonna be zero, so what I can do is I can extend that triggering system. So um, I can say, okay, I want my characters to either explode when, well, either play the full animation as soon as they hit uh, that box, which is 666, or I can bring another collision here. Uh, let's take it, uh, let's say well, I want to check an ID and my ID is gonna be a crowd rigid body collision and it's gonna be uh, zero. And I can use a or, so here, if I'm uh, touching something which is zero or, or a rigid body ID which is gonna be zero or um, or 666, I want to trigger that uh, full animation here. So, um, and well, by the way, I want to play, I want to set this as a local servo else we won't see anything. So here it's fully dynamic, so there's no animation at all. So now I'm just saying it's local servo here. And uh, when my characters will go through, they're gonna be uh, playing that run animation for the first couple of frames. Oh, and that instability you can see uh, already triggered the falling of the cube there. And um, as soon as they'll touch, now they're playing that falling animation, which is a bit better. Okay, and those guys, as they don't touch anything, they were just uh, walking, running while jumping. <laughs> okay, well, that's what well, I like it. I like I kind of like the result of it, and yeah, you can see all those instabilities here comes probably from the fact that I'm 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 not having a a big enough frame rate to deal with those weird collisions of characters being stuck into the cubes. Okay, so that kind of wrap up that session today. Um, if you got any questions, now is the time uh, to to put them. On uh, could be about physics, could be about other topics. Go ahead. Uh, and um, so, how many of those guys finally went through? I don't know. One, two, three, six here. That's ten. That's fifteen. Twenty. Uh, Twenty-five. Um, almost thirty. So that's almost ten percent of those uh, three hundred characters went through with that new setting here. So let me go through. Uh, let me go through the questions. Uh, hey, or oh, okay, Eduardo went for 15, so I'm not sure if that was before uh, I changed the speed uh, or not, but not so far, right? That was 10%. Uh, you have an error at line 1-1. One, one. Yeah, true. Um, every time I do a selection, uh, there's a Maya error here. Um, I haven't I haven't took the time to uh, set that up, uh, but that, uh, that comes from some preferences that within Maya some selection can be found or whatever. I just have to clean my prefs uh, to remove that. I haven't I haven't had the time to uh, to done it. Um, well just a regular Maya error here. Pretty pretty convenient. Uh, at this speed none will survive. So yeah you are correct. Uh, very 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 right. I need to revise my previous prediction to zero. Yeah correct as well. Um, could you please discuss the benefits of physics step steps compared to increasing the frame rate? So I guess I answered that one, uh, did I? If I if I didn't, uh, let me know, I can just uh, go back into this uh, maybe uh, uh, again. How would you start them moving after they hit the ground? Oh, that's a good one. Um, let's do that and if, uh, if uh, Greg uh, can uh, specify if I answered the question or not, uh, then I can jump onto that one. Uh, let's say you want to filter uh, the collision with the ground, well, the best way will be to specify a rigid body ID for the ground, right? So uh, what I probably will do is uh, I'll make a box 
that I'll put uh, that I'll make really big. So why do I'm doing a box rather than putting a plane here? Uh, because a plane, um, something with no uh, white, doesn't have any. Um, it doesn't really exist in the real world, right? Even like a, a piece of paper has some weight on it, and a plane within my eye is just something which has a zero white. Uh, so if you want the characters to uh, collide with something, you need to provide a volume. So what I do is I usually provide a cube here, uh, provide some really high values here for the depth and the A to cover the whole section of uh, my character. So probably it's going to be a bit bigger here, 130. Or maybe two. let's go for 200, who cares. Uh, and uh, 60 here. I want to make sure that my, um, that my cube is uh, exactly at the origin. So I'm going to put a translate of minus 0, 5. So it's exactly at 0 now. And I'm going to turn this into a rigid body. And that rigid body, I can either specify a color or a collision ID. So let's say it's going to be 100. And I can filter collisions with the ground, right? Uh, so what I can do is as soon as my characters um, have flown, maybe I want to stop or maybe here. As soon as my characters, they, they play the full animation, as soon as they touch the ground, I want to stop that full animation. And by the way, uh, with that um, current design here, if I stop the full animation, that run behavior still runs in the background, but just the fall as a higher priority. So I probably would have to turn off that run, or I probably would have to maybe sequence those two behaviors rather than having them in parallel. Um, but I can, what I can do is just say, okay, I want to check if there's a collision with something which has an ID of, the, of 100. So uh, a rigid body collisions of 100 here, and you're done. So it means that that motion here will start as soon as you collide with either the spinning bar or uh, the, the boxes and it will stop right after touching the ground. So maybe from, well, maybe from the beginning, those guys who are hitting the spinning bar, um, we, we won't have the time to see them playing the full animation because they're also touching the ground at the same time. So maybe I can uh, also specify a zone, combine that with a zone, say only if you are maybe flying maybe or only if, well, I don't know, uh, I can filter that um, maybe more properly. But let's see how it goes. So probably the spinning bars, they're playing the full, and then the, you can see they went back for uh, playing that, that run animation. So those guys are playing the full. So totally playing the full in shape uh, behavior here. Here. So you can see the full behavior here is, is uh, being played. And let's see if as soon as they touch the ground, they just stop that behavior. So here still, still green. Green, 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 and when it touch the ground, you can see that full animation just stop. There's some stopping uh, duration here to blend back to the run. They're, they're still playing the run. So I can also provide probably the same trigger here for the run to stop the run, or maybe sequence another animation there. So hopefully that answered the question. Uh, so let's see if uh, Greg could put some uh, more details here. So that makes sense. I'm all wondering how to create a simulation for an actual shot image sequence when it runs all at 24 FPS. Uh, can cache proxy be retimed? Uh, I've not looked into it. Or oh, you mean doing a 60 FPS simulation and then uh, retiming uh, everything back? Uh, the cache proxy, you got something called the time scale, uh, which we, with which you can, um, let me show you. Uh, there's a layer here, which is called a uh, uh, yeah, time scale, I believe. So let me create a just um, MT1 here, uh, that's probably that one here, looks like a scale to me. So frame warp, uh, so here it is. Uh, so you got that frame warp here where you can just uh, specify if you want to do a slow motion or a fast motion. And uh, if you got a 60 FPS cache, well, probably will be better to do something which multiplies by, 60, uh, by 24, 25, depending where you live, or 30. Uh, so let's say you do a 44, 24, sorry, frame FPS uh, show. Uh, maybe it's better to do a 72 or 144 or something which is, you know, can be divided by 24 uh, and just speed it up by two times, three times, really up to you here. And uh, th that framework will, will take this into account. Um, so hope that answered the questions. Um, you can also probably like skip uh, within the cache. You can just, uh, you know, the cache are just going to be Frame one is going to be named um, my cache name dot one dot uh, the cache extension. So what you could do is just uh, 
renumber uh, the cache files so you can remove maybe one uh, one on three or two on three by the way and uh, just rename those and that will just uh, and bring those into a 24 FPS scene and that will solve the, the issue here. So yeah, you, you can totally frame warp that if you want to. Um, I'll let sometimes to, uh, if there are more questions here, uh, I'll let sometimes to, to people uh, write them down. Let me, in the meantime, remind you that next week we're going to speak about uh, clothes, especially the physics clothes one. So we do, we got actually two ways uh, to deal with that. So we got a enclose uh, system, which used the, the Maya enclose system, but it's kind of a legacy system, which we don't really advise people to use. And we also have something which relies on the same physics engine than the one we're doing ragdolls with, uh, which is uh, called the Apex system, which relies on the NVIDIA physics system here. So next week, we're going to show how to configure a close and how to replay that within a simulation. So we're going to speak about uh, that new behavior. Oh, well, not really new, but that behavior we haven't really spoke about. Uh, the week after, we're going to do, um, uh, we're going to make a locomotion system from scratch. So we're going to take some mocap animation, convert them, and uh, figure if they're uh, appropriate for a locomotion system or not. And uh, if they are, I'll show you uh, why they are. And if they're not, I'll show you why they're not and how you can increase your locomotion system to make it like realistic and cover all your use cases. Um, looking at the chat box, looks pretty quiet to me. So probably a good time to wrap this up and uh, end that session. Um, so uh, if you haven't done so, subscribe to the YouTube channel to know about the next session. Uh, grab the software for free on the website to play with it. Comes with the same assets and the one I'm playing with. And uh, I guess have a nice weekend, stay safe, and uh, take care. If more questions come after that session, feel free to just uh, send us an email uh, at support.golan.com uh, through the form, and we'll be happily answering it uh, ASAP. You guys take care and see you later.